Hi, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the series of lectures where we were discussing sold examples from the textbook Mechanics of Material written by Timoshenko and Giri. So here I have another problem from the topic of beam bending. This is an interesting problem for quite a few reasons. This is a real life example. You may run into similar examples um, in whichever industry you are working in because most of our engineering systems are moving. For example, an automobile, a rocket, a jet engine, a lot of them are moving while they are in operation. So the, in this particular problem, we have a frame, a simple frame, which travels horizontally with an acceleration of A0 as shown over here then they are asking us to compute what is the maximum stress sigma max in this particular arm in this vertical arm ab so all details are provided i request you to read through the problem slowly try to solve it on your own if you are not able to do that please listen to rest of my video okay so the key concept that we need to make use of while we are so solving this particular problem is the concept of D'Alembert's principle. D'Alembert's principle is fairly simple, but most of us sometimes overlook what is the meaning of, or what is the, what is so special about the theorem. See, the main speciality, if you ask me, that it's very simple. We can reduce a dynamics problem to a static one. And then it becomes a lot easier to compute the stresses and reactions and all those things in a system when we convert a dynamics problem into a static one. So how we, we are doing that using D'Alembert's principle. So let's say there is a particle which is of mass m and let's say it is accelerating with an acceleration a. Let me use the vector symbol over here. So this is the next external force f vector equal to m a vector so this can be thought of as a small box sorry the system can be thought of as a small particle of little particle of mass m and it is accelerating like this so it's a dynamic problem isn't it the system is in motion so it's a di it's, it's 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 dynamics now the other way to look at the same problem is that let's say onto this system and I'm, I'm exerting and a force like this. So the body was accelerating in this direction. So I'm applying an equal and opposite. I'm applying an opposite force, not an equal. I'm applying a force, which is, it's a fictitious force. It's not real. It's a fictitious force. So let's say if I'm applying this force M a then what happens so now if i when i compute the net ac external force acting on the system it will be zero getting it so that means now this is the situation f vector is the set of forces f vector denotes the net external force acting on this particular mass initially okay so this force is always there and this force is equal to mass times the acceleration of this particular point mass. Now, in addition to this force, I'm applying an, e an opposite force, which is of the value of M times A. Now what happens from equation one, uh, let me denote this as equation one. So from equation one, the F vector will be MA minus MA that means zero, that amounts to zero, or in other words, the system is not exerted upon by any unbalanced external force. So now this comes to a static problem. Make sense? So this is the whole concept of D'Alembert's principle. The main advantage is that reducing a dynamics problem to a static one and this force this fictitious force is also known as the inertia force you will hear this term a lot in your uh, in your job in your career so always have a feel for what is that inertia force so inertia force is used to reduce a dynamics problem into a static one so extending that kind of a concept to this problem 
we can schematically represent the whole thing similar to this wherein we have a uniformly distributed load acting on this vertical frame frame now i need to compute what will be this uniform load let's say if it is q newtons per unit length of this frame a b what will be the value of q let's see how i will go about evaluating that now the total force acting on that particular vertical bar can be written as the product of the total mass times the acceleration so the mass is simply volume times the density so rho is the density and this is the volume i have assumed that d is my depth which is perpendicular to the plane of the figure so you have l you have t and d is the measurement or is a depth perpendicular to this particular figure so this is the total force acting on the structure so we are applying this force in the reverse direction as described or as shown over here make sense now i i have i'm applying that it as a uniformly distributed load so in order to evaluate the intensity q i'm simply telling that the net force should be the same so q is having the units of newton per meter when i multiply it with l which is the length of that vertical frame i should get this from this the q or intensity of that loading comes around a0 rho t d make sense so you got q now the next thing now i can assume this as kind of a cantilever beam onto which this kind of load is acting make sense now rest of things are much related to the beam theory so i will use this kind of sign convention i need to show this up front because this is very important so this is the positive bending moment scenario and this is the positive shear stress scenario make sense this is it doesn't matter too much but for this problem but it is very good you have certain sign conventions in your mind before you go ahead so i assume that that structure with that of a cantilever onto which a uniformly distributed load with intensity q is acting then the shear force diagram will be something like this and the bending moment diagram will be something like this and if you are worrying how i got this it's fairly simple i'm taking i'm cutting a section at x distance from this point at from here at a distance of x i'm cutting a section and i'm looking at the shear force and the bending moment diagram so i'm assuming that v is the shear stress acting on that cross section then from simple equilibrium the shear stress is coming around qx similarly if i work out or the bending moment diagram the free body diagram will look something like this then the next step, step will be to evaluate the m from the conservation of if you take moments about this point then it should be zero so from that argument or from that kind of a of argument i can get a value for m which can be written as minus qx square by 2 so that's how <clears throat> that that these two quantities will vary something like this apologies for my poor drawing but uh, it will look something like this so few takeaways the maximum bending moment will be at this point and it will it will be having a value of ql square by 2 having evaluated the bending moment or the maximum bending moment coming at this particular location now it's our turn to evaluate the corresponding stresses because we want to compute what is the maximum stress acting at this location so we know what is the moment max moment max is computed like this ql square by 2 q can be substituted from my earlier computation it comes around this now you know what is the bending moment acting at that section then now in order to compute the stress i should first evaluate my section modulus so section modulus is defined as area moment of inertia divided by y max which can be evaluated like this 
Hold on for a second. Is this right? No, this is not right. Why? Because I made a mistake here. Here, the section which undergoes bending, if I want to compute that I value, moment of cross area, moment of inertia about the cross section, then it is not something like this. It will it will look something like this in, instead of the this is an important portion in this particular problem this is somewhere we can get it wrong so we should pay more attention especially regarding um, especially while we are evaluating the area moment of inertia so in this case as you as i have shown here when the loading is like this you should compute the area moment of inertia wherein you will be taking the third power of t because uh, th that's the right way to go about it because uh, if I draw the side view over here then this is the d which we were talking about perpendicular to the plane of the paper then this dimension will be t okay so we need to compute the bending bending or the we need to compute the i about this axis getting it i'm dr drawing the not the side view i'm drawing the top uh top view here so then i is dt cube by 12. similarly i can say y max will be my uh t by 2. now rest of the things are simply plug and check because I have evaluated uh, what is my M max in terms of all the non quantities. Then here I have evaluated my C section modulus also in terms of the non quantities. Now they are asking you what is the maximum value of the stress. So sigma max is simply M max divided by C. C is the section modulus and you have to be a bit careful when you are computing C. Or when you are computing the area moment of inertia you have to pay attention to the small details like this so that you won't lose lose your precious marks like it is bending this way so we should take a about the i about this particular axis so all these things should be taken into account once you give your final answer thanks for watching i hope you understood the concept of d'alembert's principle and using and the principle of D'Alembert's principle, how you can compute the uh, maximum stresses that is coming in a frame that is moving with an acceleration A0. Thanks for watching.